All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to False Count Radio. Without further ado, let's welcome Gorgeous George. George, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? I'm doing just great, and of course, I've got Pitbull Gary Wolf on the line. Gary, go ahead. Hey, you. How are you doing? Hey, Long hey, how you been, honey? I, I've been all right. I guess I haven't really, but I'm hanging in there. How are you doing? All good. Better than I, I was, Dylan, put it that way. But, uh, just hanging and banging. Uh, how's the family? <laughs> right on. That's good. I, uh, well, I had a staph infection, and then I got rid of that, and then I went straight into the knee, this knee thing I got. I got in a car wreck with a deer a couple weeks ago. So I've been, I've had a stream of chain of bad luck, and, but out of it, out of the ashes was, I got a new car, I'm getting my knee fixed, and I'm getting a brand new tooth. <laughs> so I'm like, yay! So the car wreck wasn't for nothing. That's about it. Well, we should, well at least you're safe. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm alive, so that's a good thing, and. I don't have any glass in my face no more, so I'm all good. So, so what else is going on? Damn, sounds like you have a, a you know had a stream of unfortunate events happen. And I actually had a question for you, and that was, uh, were you a wrestling fan growing up? No, actually, I was a fan of the wrestling cartoon, Rock and Roll Wrestling. I, uh, it was, and that's funny that I ended up being with Randy after watching that when I was like eight. <laughs> So I, I, I would watch it every once in a while. My dad was never, like, into any male kind of sports things, you know, on TV. Mm-hmm. So we just never watched it. I don't think it wasn't that I wasn't into it. I just never watched it. My dad never watched it, you know what I mean? Yeah. What are your earliest memories of the business? Oh, uh, watching Hogan and Andre the Giant and Randy, <laughs> Miss <laughs> Elizabeth, uh, stuff like that. Let me think. A uh, Million Dollar Man. Uh, God, Roddy Roddy Piper. Um, shoot, just you know, all all, all the big timers back in my day, you know, mm-hmm. just you know that was about it. it we'd flash it, you know, TV would flash on. I'd watch it for five minutes. I used to like the old wrestling better than I don't like it like really like now. I mean, back then it was more like about the show and the clothing and the the glitz and glamour. Now it's just like. I don't know. I don't. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't watch wrestling at all now. Oh, so so you don't like the the sports entertainment era? You liked it when it was actually two guys getting in there, and it was about their work, not about the story. Right. Yeah. And I liked the flashy costumes and the gimmick. Everybody had a gimmick, and you know, it wasn't just a pair of speedos, and that was it. You know what I mean? Mhm. I don't know. I, I don't know. Like you know, you had Hacksaw Jim Duggan and stuff like that, and you know, everybody had their own little thing. I liked it like that. Now, today, the gimmicks are just, they're not like they were then. I don't know, that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. Uh, Obviously, wrestling wasn't your first career choice, so what did you do before breaking in the business? Oh, I was a stripper for years. (laughs) I I, I got a, it's it's so terrible. If I was to fill out an application, all I could really write down was like, stripper, wrestling, and now in a band. Whoop-de-doo, no one's going to hire me. (laughs) (laughs) Now, uh... There's reports all over the internet that when you were a kid, you were a little badass. You want to elaborate on that? Uh, I used to be. Um, I grew up in a really pretty tough neighborhood, and uh, everybody kind of got into a lot of trouble when we were young. And I came from a lot of um, my family. My parents were the only parents that were still together. Everybody else in the neighborhood's families were all, you know, broken homes and stuff. So uh, they, the kids, all the kids I grew up with. They only lived with their mother or their father, so they were always alone, so we always had somewhere to party. So more or less, every house that was in front of mine was a party house. So not only did we live in the hood, we had free access to whatever we wanted to do 24 hours a day. So it's kind of a free-for-all. So we were all getting into trouble real young. I started getting in trouble at, at 12, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, it's just like, you know, and then everybody started getting on. There was this one kid that kind of came to our neighborhood from, came from Georgia, and he just was like three years older than us, brought drugs to the neighborhood, and from that point on, he just destroyed everybody in our neighborhood on drugs. And everybody got addicted to it. Everybody went crazy. Everybody was stealing, and 
you name it, everybody got in trouble. Have and you seen the, anybody from that area, uh, you know, since oh, then? I still talk to everybody all the time, and it's, it's so sad because 99% of my friends that we all, there was probably, like, uh, we grew up in a, this is a weird situation, but, like, a friend of ours' parents owned a bait shop, and what they did is they took all the bait shop stuff out of it and let us, all us runaways live there. So there was, like, it was a house full of, like, 15 to 20 runaways, and we would uh, go steal all night long, car stereos, this, that, this, whatever, and uh, sell them to get the money just to live. And then we, when, then when we all got on drugs, it got ten times worse. So then it just it, it escalated, you know what I mean? And this was normal where I was from. It was totally normal. And now I still talk. I'm like, out of all the people I grew up with, there's probably four of us that are not still on drugs that are that got out of that environment and atmosphere and are not in prison still. Damn, well, you're one of the lucky ones then, obviously. Yeah, you know what? And I, I still struggle every day with addiction, and I always will. You know what I mean? Once you've got that bug, it kind of stays with you, so, you know. That's that for that. I mean, I've been, I haven't, I haven't, haven't messed with that in a long time, but uh, you know, it's always in the back of your head. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mhm. Addict, uh, always an addict. That's what I say. That I guess. How did you initially meet Randy Savage? Mm. At a strip club. <laughs> 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 he um he happened to be at the place that I I only worked there for a half a day. I met him there that night, and um, the story's really long if you guys want to hear it, but I could shorten it. But anyways, uh, I met I met him at uh, the Tampa. I'm sorry, I'm a little out of it, guys. I'm on a, a Viking and, and for my knee, and it's just got me whacked out, I'm itching everywhere. So anyways, um, what was I saying? He, I met him at I met him at the Dow House in Tampa, and uh, I got kicked out of there that night for getting in a fight with Evil Knievel and Randy invited me to come over to his house for to for a party or whatever and I didn't want to, I just met the guy I wasn't going to go over there and they kicked me out and threw me out of the Dow house in a sequin gown in the parking lot with four bouncers because I was going to beat the shit out of Evil Knievel so we long story short he ended up giving me his phone number I never called him never called him Moved in with this girl. She was another stripper, and she's like, "Didn't you say me and her were not actually getting along very well at the time?" And she says, "Didn't you say you met Randy Savage?" I go, "Yeah, like six months ago. Why?" And she, I go, "Yeah, at a strip club. Why?" And she goes, "Well, don't you get his phone number?" I go, "Yeah, why?" And she goes, "Well, my little brother wants to go, and if you more, more or less, she didn't say this, but she didn't have to. If you don't want me to ruin all your shit, you better call him and see if we can get free tickets to the show." <laughs> so I was like, she used to put her dog in my room and let it eat up my high heels and shit. So I was just like, all right, fuck it. So I call, I call him on the phone, and I said, I got the answer machine. I was so happy because I didn't want to look like an ass and I haven't seen this guy or talked to him but once in my whole life and then call him want something. You know what I mean? Like, fuck, now I got to call and ask for tickets. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so she call, she's standing at my doorway, and she's standing, like, tapping her foot while she's watching me use the phone. And I said, uh, hi, I don't know if you, get, I got the answer machine, so I was happy. I was like, ah, good. And I'd be, hi, I don't remember if you remember me or not. Um, I'm the girl you met at the Dow House. I got kicked out. Um, I was wondering if you, um, if, if our, our little brother, my friend's little brother is poor, doesn't have any money for tickets for the show, and I wanted to know if he, if you could get us some tickets. Well, two seconds later, the phone rings back, it's Randy, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember you. How are you doing? I said, I'm doing good. I go, I'm sorry I called you and asked you that. And he's like, no, I'm glad you did, because I was wondering why you never called. And I said, i just been busy, and, you know, I was working a lot and stuff, and, I really didn't want to call him back, you know, so I didn't. <laughs> so then, anyways, he was just like, uh, after, he goes, then I went to the show, and then it, I saw Randy. I was, like, less than a foot from him and didn't talk to him. And he goes, did you go to the, then he calls the next day, and he goes, did you go to the show? I go, yeah, I went. And he goes, well, how come you didn't come and talk to me? I said, I didn't, you were with Liz, and I didn't want to interrupt, you know, you guys were talking over the show and stuff, so I didn't want to be, you know, in the way or whatever. And he's like, no, you wouldn't have been in the way at all. What are you doing tonight? And I was like, I couldn't stand my roommate at the time. 
Like, I hated her guts. And I was just like, I'm not doing anything wise. Like, and I was starving. I had no money. And I just, because I was just doing terrible at work lately. He's like, do you want to go out to dinner? I was like, yeah. <laughs> so he took me to dinner. And uh, it we it was our like our first date, you know. And it was like the nicest date that anyone had ever took me in at the time. And he was a gentleman. And we became like really close friends. And that went from there to there to there to there. And we hung out all the time, and we liked both of us liked working out, so we became really close friends. And he got sick of her, my old roommate, and said, "You know what? Fuck her. You can live with me." And then that's how our relationship started. Now you said you got in a fight with Evil Knievel. Can you like yeah. elaborate on that? Oh, that motherfucker. Well, anyways, okay, I had three dollars left to my name because I just moved from Chicago down to Florida. I had three dollars sitting on the bar. Now, this is how this went. You talk about a surreal life and a weird situation, okay? It was me. Uh, it, okay, it was the bar, right? So it's like me. On, one, on my left side was Randy. I didn't even notice he, he was there. I didn't notice anybody was there because it was topless. And this was like the first time I was ever going on topless, like on a stage stage. I was freaking out, and there was one girl that was on stage before me, so I was waiting to go up. So they're like, in a minute, we're going to have Ricky go on stage. And in my mind, I'm like, fuck, I'm starting to freak out. So I had to hyperventilate. So then all of a sudden, some guy, some old dude standing next to me, I had no idea who. I haven't seen a picture of Evil Knievel since he was in his 70s in his prime. How the hell would I know that was him when he was like looking like he was 100, you know what I mean? So anyways, he hits me as hard as he can in my arm, and he goes, why don't you buy me a drink? And just at that point in time, you just fucked with the wrong motherfucker because I was ready. I was not wanting to go on stage. I was starting to cry because I had to go topless and stuff. I was freaking out. And then now you want me to buy you a drink, and that's my last few bucks? I was like, fuck you, you motherfucker. I went crazy on him. And then I had, then Randy's going, stop, 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 stop. I didn't even notice it was Randy and Randy until he came out to the parking lot to talk to me. I had no idea who that was. They're like, did you know you just got in a fight with Evil Knievel? And then guess who was sitting next to Evil Knievel? Oh. It was the two ZZ Top guys, and then it was the Allman Brothers. And this is the craziest thing. After all that, I had, now I just, I was dancing at Sapphire out in Las Vegas in uh, 07. Now, uh, this happened way back in 90, 98, 97 or something where I got in a fight with Evil Knievel and saw, um, you know, CZ Top Guys then. They remembered me. They saw me. They came in the strip club at uh, Sapphire in Vegas and remembered me from that last strip club I saw them in that many years ago. Wow. They were like, you're that girl I got in a fight with Evil Knievel. I was like, yeah, it is. <laughs> Oh, that's I mean, I heard he died. Now I feel bad, but at the time I was ready to fucking kill that guy. <laughs> then, it, then when they kicked me out and they threw me out in the street, they still kept my three bucks. Wow. <laughs> so the, what happened was Randy tells me he says, "Oh, I feel so bad." He's like, "You know, I I just started kind of confiding in him. You know, I just moved here. My girlfriend's waiting for me at the hotel. I was gonna make enough money to pay f for the hotel rent, and f you know, sh we're starving." He's like, "We well, you know I got food at my house. There's people there right now." I'm like, "Why are you at a strip club when you have people?" you know, at your house or whatever, or, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't get that. He's like, I just needed to get out of there for a while. So if you want something to eat, you can come over and eat. And I'm, I just, you know, sat in the car for a little while. I'm thinking to myself, either this guy's going to try to rape me or he's going to be cool. You know what I mean? And at this point, I was like, what do I got left to lose? I have no money, no one to call. What the fuck? So I got, I got in the car and I drove to his house. And he felt really bad for me. He he also gave me a hundred bucks. He and his phone number. He's like, if you ever need anything while you're here, I'm always here for you. And I never called him until that girl made me call him and asked for those free tickets. Wow, that's kind of a coincidence. Uh, yeah. What was your first reaction when he suggested bringing you into the business? I didn't want to. I I was completely against it. And then I had um, I did not want number one. I didn't want people to think that. Me and Randy, because me and him had been seeing each other way, way long time before I'd even got into the business. And uh, I didn't want people to think that that's why I was with him. And not just that, I was totally afraid of it. I didn't, you know, know no, nothing about it or whatever. But what happened was is um, I got to, they wanted to switch him and put him with a girl. And Liz wanted to get away from him, so she wanted to go with 
Lex, and he needed a valet. So they were going to give him Tori Wilson. Well, I flew out to Venice with him, uh, California, and I met her, and I was like, there is no way you are traveling with that girl three days a week by yourself alone in hotels and shit. There's no way. He goes, well, then I guess you got the job. And I go, what do you mean? And he's like, if you think I, they're going to give me a girl, and if you don't, and if you're against it, they're going to give her me anyways. So then you have to do it. I said, I'm not doing that. He's like, well, then she's going to do it because they're going to give me a girl. And so I said, okay. I said, okay to it. And then I tried it, and I liked it. And it was like the first time in my life I, I was actually, remember I said I came from like a shitty area and, you know, came from this hood rat chick that had actually got a shot at doing something cool in her life and got lucky. So it was cool. And we got along so good, and we were best friends, and we were great traveling buddies, and, you know, it was a great run. We had a great time together. Viper, go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering, what was the the extent of your training, and who did you train with? There really wasn't no extent to my training, <laughs> to be honest. The only person, they always said Medusa trained me. Medusa only been in the ring with me like one or two times. It was actually Nora Greenwald that had did it, and uh, Molly Holly, and um, she did it as much as she could. She trained me for the Charles Robinson match. Randy didn't want me to learn how to wrestle. Hey, Mom, what? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, what do you call it? That was um the extent of that. He didn't want. They kept pushing for me to want to know more about wrestling and you know put me through the school and all this and that. And he didn't want nothing. He didn't want me to have nothing to do with that. He was just. He would always tell me, you know, once they get you like that, they're gonna break all your bones. You're gonna be all fucked up. You don't want to feel like I feel. He's like, you know, if you can get away with being pretty and you be by me, then that's as good. Then they can all fuck off. He's like, you don't need to learn that shit. And then now recently, I tried about. This is how I got the staph infection. Just recently, um, a couple months ago, I um. Can you guys shut the, shut up? Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, um, I forgot what I was saying now. They just they just sidetracked me. What was I talking about? You're talking about your staph infection that you got. Oh, so just recently I wanted to go and learn to wrestle. I'm like, you know what? I'm around Tracy Brooks and everybody, every, you know, almost every other weekend doing these conventions. And, you know, everybody's either my age or older than me. And I'm thinking, you know, if they can do it, then I can do it. Why not try it, give it a try, lose weight, you know, get down to the, what I used to look like and get my ass in gear and try, to, try it again. You know what I mean? Try, do a tryout for them and see if they'll take me. And so I worked my ass off for about two, three months. I was going to New York every day or every every other day or as much as I could and training with a guy named Azriel. And um, then all of a sudden I don't feel good. And I had, I had got mat burn on my elbow. And the next thing you know, I got like this golf ball size thing under my arm. And I'm thinking I had a spider bite. I didn't really think anything too much about it. It would get hot, and it would burn, and then it would go away. And then it would do the same thing, like, all day, all night. So then, anyways, I uh, went to the doctor. They gave me antibiotics for a spider bite. Well, then it kept growing and growing and growing, and now I'm starting to feel funky in my armpit. And I was having all these weird uh, reactions. It wasn't just, like, a fever. It was, like, I feel like I was dying. And I kept telling my husband, I'm like, I don't feel good. I mean, when I say I don't feel good, I feel weird. And it, so um, it went from, like, you know, the golf ball size, it started turning into, like, a Twinkie, you know, and it was from my elbow up. So it was getting bigger and bigger. I could just feel it, you know, crawling up my arm. So we went to the emergency room, and they cut it open, and it was a staph infection and squeezed all the juice out. And so now the, the worst part about the whole thing is, is, now, once you get that, you're susceptible to it. So when it comes to going back to wrestling, I'm a little gun shy. And it's just like I'm so afraid to die because I was in the hospital five days, and uh, I saw God while I was there a couple times throughout that five-day stint of being in that hospital. So ever since I, I, that's happened, you know, Azrael keeps going, when are you going to come back and start training again? And, and in the back of my mind, I'm like, dude, I don't ever want to go back or near a ring again. I don't know if I'm uh, if I might, could. Uh, 
I'm, I'm, I want to interrupt you. I'm thinking maybe he didn't have his place that sanitary. Well, it wasn't his place. It was just, you know, it could have been from anything. It could have also been we had found a baby kitten um, uh, here. You can drink that if you want it. We found a, a baby kitten on the side of the road, and I could have had Matt burn, and then I could have, the cat could have had it because the cat died. It was a baby kitten. And um, I don't know. I, it could have been anything, you know what I mean? But I don't know. I'm just scared now. Plus, I also kind of felt like, I didn't know how long it was going to take me. I was learning quick, but I also was like, in the same time, I was like, I was, I was, I'm a little shy when it comes to, first of all, I can't talk on a microphone. <laughs> I know I can't. That's why I never used to say anything because I was afraid. I, I don't know what happens. It's like the camera turns on and my mouth just shuts right up. I can talk shit all day long anywhere else, but when that camera's on, I can't say a word. I'm terrible at it. There's no promo throwing for me. <laughs> you get froze up. You freeze up. Uh, I freeze Corey, up. I it's just... you... Corey, I want to let you know that New Jack just tried to call me. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's what happens, that's what happens what? to a lot of people. You should... I said that happens to a lot of people. You shouldn't feel bad. I mean, it uh, no, yeah, so that I, I, I'm, now I'm thinking, you know, maybe – it's time in my life. Uh, then I got in the car accident with a deer, and I don't know what I. My band's doing really well. Um, we're getting ready to go record a new CD, so uh, we're getting a lot of fans, and people are starting to figure out my husband has a new band, which you know he don't play for the Misfits anymore. He plays in Gorgeous Frankenstein. We have a new singer, and we have a new bass player. So um, things are starting to change for the band for the better. You know, it's taken us forever to get it off. When, when you ain't got any money to do anything, it's almost impossible to get shit going, you know what I mean? So we're doing it little by little by little, and it's finally getting to where it's going. So we were hopefully going to be on tour this summer, but I don't see that happening now because the record isn't finished. So we'll see what happens as soon as that record gets finished. <laughs> then I'll know where I am. Oh, yeah, you'll, I th- huh? yeah, you'll be on tour once You'll be on tour once the album's done. Yeah, 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 and then we'll be all right. Then then I won't be sitting here ball aching about not having any money. Plus, I've had a hard time with, um, and then when I also started questioning wrestling was I had a stalker messing with me for the last, well, since May, and he's still doing it. And um, it, it started out as he was booking me for shows, and then I got in, I, he just started getting obsessed with me, and then I wouldn't, you know, I didn't want him booking me anymore, and it's just turned into complete stalker, chaos, nonstop bullshit since May of last year, and I'm still fucking dealing with it, and it makes me sick because what he's doing is he's trying, he'll go to promoters, I've been, it's, it's been really hard for me to get books because he'll go to promoters, I'll get you Tracy Brooks, SoCal Vale, and ODB, but you can't bring Gorgeous George. And I'll already be on the show, and they'll 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 take me off the show. Wow, that's, that's, that's pretty messed up. And he, you know, and then you got you got these promoters that you know they're getting three free chicks because this dude's a fucking idiot, and you know of course they're gonna tell me I can't come. So my wrestling life lately since May has been terrible. And I've lost, just the month of December, I lost two grand from him. And that was my kid's Christmas money. So, you know, you got these fucking mark pieces of shit that want to, you know, be prom- help promote. And this and that and all they are is somebody that's trying to be attached to you as much as possible. It's disgusting. Us girls get it the worst. You know, with shit like that. I'm going to have to kick that dude's ass. <laughs> oh, he needs his ass kicked for sure. He's probably listening to this radio interview right now. Wouldn't surprise me. That's okay. <laughs> we're not accepting calls, so it's okay. <laughs> no, if you were, I wish I wish he'd get on here. Oh, okay. Well, shit. Well, I'll invite him to call in. By a bunch of monkeys. Right? Oh. Uh, if anybody does have a question for Gorgeous George, you actually can call in, though, at 347-994-2320. Um, you know, now talking, you know, we're talking about WCW, and uh, what was the politics like backstage when you first arrived? Hmm. Everything is political, I'd say, with wrestling. It's all who you know, who chicken, we're getting ready to go, okay? 
my daughters want me to go to um, Chuck E. Cheese, and I haven't gotten a shower yet. Oh. <laughs> so we're 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 working on that right now. Um, the, everything is political. Uh, it's who you know, who you're going out with, who they don't like, who they who sells the most, who you know, who's got the most charisma to make the most money. Everybody gets paid different, you know, it's that type of thing. So I don't know. It is all political to me. That's why another reason I think I have a hard time uh, getting jobs is when me and Randy first broke up. I I definitely think that um, there was there was some some you know blackballing going around and around there on that. <laughs> mhm. What, what led to the breakup, if you don't mind my asking? Um, it's terrible to say, but um, what led to the breakup was my sister and my sister and him. We're getting a little bit too close hanging out with each other. And uh, he kind of fell for my sister while he was with me and more or less said, well, if you don't let me go out with her too, you know, like while you're sleeping, I'll have sex. But this is his exact words were, I right, we were going to move into a house together in, instead of living in two separate places. And I lived with him for a while, but I couldn't take it because he had OCD. So I got my own place. Well, then I'm like, this doesn't work because, you know, you know, us back and forth, back and forth. Can't we just get a fucking house together? You know, this is getting too much, the back and forth stuff. So anyways, we um, we were looking at houses and we were going to get one. Well, when we went to buy the house, he comes over one night and he wanted, my, he told me while I'm sleeping, he'll have sex with my sister and while she's sleeping, he'll have sex with me. And I told him, get the fuck out of my house. I said, you know what? You come back when you're fucking sober, you fucking goofball. Well, the next day, he came back, and he was still bitching about the same fucking thing. So I said, you know what? Stay out of my life. Stay away from us. Me and my sister called in a moving company, packed our ship, and, and moved right back to Chicago. Oh, wow. We actually have a caller on the line from the 815, if we can take the call, if that's okay. Okay, yeah. All right, caller, you're on the air with Gorgeous George. Hello. 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 <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's yeah. where I'm from. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I wasn't sure that was me. Yeah. Hi, gorgeous George. Uh, my name is Anthony Thomas. I actually had a couple of questions that I thought you could ask uh, or that you could answer. Um, okay. You were with Randy Savage for how long? Three years? Two years? Yeah. Two um, years. Two and a half. Because I, I really want to know, because if you can either confirm or, or squash this rumor that's been going on for years and years uh, about uh, Randy Savage ever having uh, any kind of relations with Stephanie McMahon of uh, WWE. Oh, I can't comment on that one. Okay. <laughs> uh, just curious. I figured I'd... <laughs> uh, that's it. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> okay. Man, he asked the tough questions. Yeah, he went right to the juggler on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That's <laughs> all uh, right. What are your memories of the angle where Nash poured sewer into your limo on Nitro? Huh? I said, what are your memories of the angle where Nash poured sewage into your limo on Nitro? My memories of that is this. That was a real fucking sewer truck, so there must have been shit in it at one time. They couldn't have cleaned it out that damn good for them to refill it up with fake shit to put on us. <laughs> I, that's all I kept thinking about was, like, there's still shit in this fucking tank. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so. What are your memories of the angle that you worked with in ECW where you were attacked by Francine? Oh, she's, she, she whacked the shit out of me with that stick. Almost broke my head. <laughs> I swear to God, I never knew those sticks hurt like that, man. I hate them sticks. I don't ever want anybody ever in the rest of my life to hit me with one of those sticks. She almost knocked my fucking lights out. <laughs> I'm not kidding, dude. Oh, my God. I'm like, God, dude, you have to crank me so hard? <laughs> she was like, I didn't even crank you hard. I was like, oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> it hurt so bad. You have no idea. That's uh, funny. You actually appeared on pay-per-view as Tommy Dreamer's secret weapon and attacked Jazz and Francine. What are your memories of that? Oh, man, back in those days, I used to be high as a kite. It's hard to freaking remember half of my life, but, um, hmm. Yeah, I really can't remember that one too much. Hmm. <laughs> 
I uh, yeah, I got on a I got on a whirlwind uh drug trip for about two years after I got off T V yeah, about a year. I got real, real depressed and I locked myself in my room for a year after the Randy thing. I I didn't I didn't leave my room, I wouldn't talk to people. I mean I got really bad where I had agoraph- I was agoraphobic and just I couldn't be around people. I started doing a bunch of coke and just blowed my brains out, you know what I mean? Mhm. And so that was about about it, and then you know, it feels good to be clean. <laughs> well, that's good at least. How long have you been yeah, clean? You know. If you don't mind my asking. How what? How long have you been clean? If you don't mind my asking. Two years. Oh, congratulations. Well, and, and before that, it was uh, I only did it one time before that for two years. So actually, I've done it once in four years. Hmm. And then before that, I had only and before that I hadn't touched drugs since I was sixteen. Oh wow! So yeah. it's not too bad then. No, I, I went all, from 16 to 27, and then I hit 27, it was just like whammy. I had, I had you know, had a, the breakup, and then I got a real bad depression. I, I have real bad bipolarness, so I get de- really depressed, and I used to just, you know, like to be by myself, and I guess that was like my buddy, you know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, old old habits can come back, like I said, if you don't keep them at bay, so I just don't go around people that are fucked up now, and I keep clean. I can't go to meetings. I'm not down with sitting there that long. It hurts my back. But as of, like, being clean and um, not hanging out with people that do it, if they do it, that's cool. I don't, I'm not God. I don't judge. Do it what you want. I just can't be around it no more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, you know, you're talking about Randy, and we asked a little bit earlier about it, but uh, I, I got to know, what led to the fight with you and Randy versus Road Warrior Hawk and his wife backstage at the Kid Rock concert? I didn't. I had known they had so much heat. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know anything about them two. He had mentioned once about, like, his wife said that she, Randy tried messing with her i'm going chicken is there any way you guys can call me like this kid is gonna die if i don't take her chuck cheese she's mm-hmm. been waiting for hours <laughs> uh, how about this will be the last question does that work okay. and we can have okay, you back okay. on it another time for part two yeah let's do that we'll do part two okay okay last question chicken okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so um what happened was is um he had heat with with him because apparently they were all they were all friends he was really good friends with him and they were all at a sushi bar sitting around at one of the big tables where they cooked the food. Chicken, I said one question, I'm done, okay? Cut it out. So, anyways, um, she's in there pulling her head off. <laughs> so, anyways, um, uh, he had heat with him because she said when they were at the sushi bar, Randy was fondling her legs under the table while Hawk was on the other side. Of her, like she sat next to Randy, and Randy was supposedly touching her. Well, Randy says he wasn't, and to this day he said, "Oh, she's she was a shit starter." He swore on everything. He he swore to God. I believe them too. I don't really think that he did do what they said that he did. Cause I mean, he he goes, "Why would I fucking lie to you?" You know what I mean? He's like, "Me and you weren't together, so why would I lie if I touched her?" Then you know what I mean? He's like, "I did not touch her," and she would say that I did. And so, anyways, um, they they hadn't seen each other in a long, long time. So that just happened to be the night, and I was the only one that wasn't fucked up, and it was bad. It was like everybody else was just off the rock or fucked up, drunk and shit. My sister was there, and a friend of mine was there, and Randy was there, and I was there, and um, we were walking backstage, and there's a million security guys, and nobody would jump in on the fight. It was awful. It was awful. And, I mean, it looked like two rhinos fighting each other. That's how big they were. And there was, like, no way no one could stop it. Stop it. it was insane. And they, they ripped, the, like, the urinals off the walls. It was like there was, there was tiles coming off the walls. The toilets were falling out of the seats. You name it, it was going on. It was something else to watch. Sounds like so, it. Well, yeah. Well, Real quick, would you like to plug your Facebook or anything for fans to Yeah, to sure. You? Everybody, I'm almost up to 5,000 people, so if uh, you want to be my friend, you better get on there now. Cause it's I almost can't. fan page time, huh? Yeah, I think it's almost 
to that part where they cut everybody off, but um, it's George Frankenstein, and my band is Gorgeous Frankenstein. That's on MySpace, and I also have Gorgeous George Frankenstein on MySpace as well. So you can hit me up on and I answer all the questions, so talk to me, people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and thanks so much for the interview. i got to get in the shower for that kid kills me. <laughs>